So where are we going today, love? It's another secret. Don't you think? I think they're going to get pissed off with all these secrets. Let's just call it Main Island, then. Well, that, that is where we're going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. We're off to Maine, just for a day. So what is your hope for this visit to Maine Island? I need to see whales. Whales? It's my new mission. Yeah. Kill, kill a whale, yeah. orcas. I, I just really want to see them. I will not rest until I do. Alright. But we're not going to see them here. Should we get up top? By the time you get up top, we'll have landed. But that's when you see them. It is actually. <laughs> I really want to see them. You really do, don't you? I do. I just got so excited. Yeah. Like, you just see them leaping in the water. Yeah. They're just so magical. And then with like a setting sun in the background. That would be brilliant, actually. You'd want to see them too. Of course I do. I, I've already seen many, though. I haven't. I'm yeah. a virgin whale watcher. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just didn't know what to say that. <laughs> On this landscape photography adventure, I have an agenda. Because after months of failed shoots where I honestly haven't created a killer shot for a while, well, I've decided to stop trying so hard and to try instead to have fun with my landscape photography. You know, like it used to be in the early days of no expectations or obligations. You're doing some Irish dancing. Well, yeah, it's like a teeter-totter. It's not going to be fun if it snaps. I don't think it will. I've got like no hands and I'm just giving her, hey? So we've made it to Main Island and the first spot we wanted to visit was the lighthouse here which is really quite picturesque and gorgeous mainly because of all of these rock formations that you can see in this background here. Ooh, ooh, oh this is slimy this rock, <laughs> I nearly went tits up there. And of course there's all this wonderful marine life, you've got these seagulls arguing which I love to film. I love to film seagulls arguing. You never know what they're talking about but I like to imagine what it is that they're arguing about. I will find the car keys. Hang on, hang on. Huh? Are these them, Karen? Is that the keys? Eh? No. Oh, uh, well, what about these? I think these are the keys. <laughs> Look, Karen, Karen, Karen! Do it myself. Oh, uh, okay, I'll just chuck them then. Yeah, yeah, you know what, Bob? I'm gonna go home the old-fashioned way. Karen, Karen, don't leave. I want you out of the nest by tomorrow. Come back here, Karen! Please come back. I didn't know you were so acrobatic. That really hurt. I'm not, I'm not in shape. And then we just spotted over here a cute family of sea otters, which to me are like marine cats. They've got cats' faces. They're very, very cute. So the main reason that I've come to Main Island is because I want to get a shot of these beautiful sandstone rock formations at a spot called Bennett Bay. So we're just gonna have a quick break here, pick up a coffee and then head straight there to Bennett Bay, hopefully to get a sunset shot. And depending on how successful that is, and I don't really think it's going to be that successful judging from the, the kind of cloud cover that we've got right now. You never know. Uh, if we get a good shot of that, then we'll probably head home tonight. Probably get home about 1am. But if we don't get a good shot of that, we might have to just spend the night in the camper here on the island and go for a sunrise shot. Because the view across Bennett Bay is right into the rising sun. So that could be quite spectacular tomorrow morning, depending on the light. And of course, depending on the tide, because it's one of those bays where if it's really high tide, it covers up a lot of the rock formations. So we'll have to see. The conditions have to be just right, but uh, if they are, we'll get an absolutely magnifique shot. One really cool thing about Main Island is that it's so small, it only takes about 10 minutes to get to anywhere. And within minutes, we were on the beach hunting for rock formations. Now, I was trying my best not to think about the gray weather and the guaranteed sunset of blandness because, you know, it's all about, it's all about having fun, right? Yeah, just having lots of fun. 
Anyway, it didn't take long to find some really fascinating rocks to provide an interesting foreground, so we got busy clambering down to a little vantage point that I'd spotted from the trail. So I'm pretty sure you can figure out why I'm so interested in what Bennett Bay has got to offer. And it's all about these sandstone rock formations and the erosion that's created these beautiful honeycomb patterns. I guess it's mostly water erosion, but probably a bit of wind erosion as well. And of course, in the background, we've got that beautiful island of a series of islands, actually. And I don't know if this camera can pick it up, but way off in the distance there, I might have to move my head. Way off over there is Mount Baker in Washington State. So the border between BC and Washington in the US is just in that, that body of water right over there. And there you can see, there's Baker. And if we get some light, which I really don't think we're going to get because it is 100% cloud over there, but in the very unlikely event that we do get some light, Mount Baker should catch some of that lovely glow towards sunset, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Now, I do think this would be a really good sunrise location, in which case Baker will be silhouetted and this will all be backlit. I already have pretty low expectations for this shoot. This might be a complete bust, in which case I'm just going to try and deal with it mentally by pretending that this is just a recce mission and that I'm just going to find compositions, go composition hunting, see what I can get, put it in my back pocket for a later date when I think there's a chance of good light. <laughs> important to uh, hold your breath at all times when you're getting your your test shots like <sighs> <sighs> right if I get down low this this rock shape is far more interesting but then I'm I can't see the water there's there's no separation between this boulder and the island so that just doesn't work which is such a shame because this looks Fantastic. That's so gorgeous though. So gorgeous. Oh my god. I think what I like, if you just point over here a little bit, love, I love this rock here. Because it's got this lovely pointy nub to it. And I do I do like a nub. But this is where all the foreground is. So like that's my well the, the island in the distance is my background this nub is my middle ground and I just need to place something in the foreground here but elevation is the issue but I'm, I'm kind of glad to say there's a bit of texture showing up in the clouds right now so I feel I feel that there's a chance like not a big one but I think that there is a chance just gotta just gotta keep shooting it oh that's great that's just great I think there's a chance. I hope so. You think there's a chance of something? Man, it got chilly, eh? It's really cold now. Right, so I'm going to show you this composition now. As you can see, I'm in a, as always, I'm in a very precarious spot here. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to try and show you this shot now. So the camera that I'm shooting with is at a really acute angle. I'm not quite sure how many degrees that is. So what you're seeing through here will have a bit of a sheen on it because of the angle. There's not much I can do about that just because of how sketchville this is. But anyway, let me talk you through this composition. So, and you might notice the first thing that I've, I've got here is that the digital level is telling me that it's not quite level. And this is something that I fight with quite a lot when I'm shooting super wide angle lens shots like this, is my digital level says, perfect, you got it perfectly level, Gavin. 
But then afterwards, I made it in the image thinking, that's way off, that's just, it's just wonky. So what I tend to do these days is get it fairly close and then I'll eyeball the horizon line and compare the line of the water to the lines that I can see in my grid system on this display. And if it looks way off, then I'll just make a slight adjustment because it's far more important that your image looks level than actually is level, if you see what I mean. So your software, you can tell you it's absolutely perfect, but if it doesn't look level, probably no point shooting it. Man, it's loud around here. What's that helicopter? I think that might be the Coast Guard. As you can see with this composition, it's all about this foreground. It's all about these rocks. They're, they're, that's why I'm here at Bennett Bay. They're so fascinating. There's so much texture. There's so much color as well because of this mossy, slimy lichen that grows across it. It's just, it's all about these rocks. But I do love this pointy rock that I've got in my midground, which you'll see falls perfectly on my diagonal in my grid. And then of course, I've got the island slap bang in the center over there. Now, if I just make this a little bit darker, there's no way you can see this, but just to the left of this rock here, I've got Mount Baker down in Washington, just in my frame, which looks kind of cool. And about five minutes ago, I was really quite optimistic that we were going to get some light. And I mean, there's still a chance, but it's looking pretty Dullsville. So th this might be as good as it gets. But anyway, with a shot like this, you've really got a focus stack because I am about three feet from if you look at these rocks here, I'm about three feet from those. So what I'm doing is I'm basically doing a four shot focus stack. Basically I'm focusing as close as I can. There's a point where it just loses focus and there's not much I can do. It's just the limitations of the glass that I'm using. So I start my focus here and then I gradually work through the image with different focus points, which get further and further away until I'm focusing on that island, the tree line in the island. Once I'm taking all of my frames that take us from this rock here to the far distance, then of course I'm bracketing those because I want to get as much dynamic range as possible. Two second timer, shoot for the highlights and also shoot a much more exposed image for the shadows. Jobs are good. What is going on? So a composition like this right now with completely rubbish light, it's all about the shapes. It's all about these abstract forms and these abstract shapes. And abstract shapes is something that I talk about at length in chapter three, form and flow of my composition made easy course. So there's a link in the description, check that out. It's on sale right now. It's quite dark right now. So for me to get this at the correct exposure at let's say F11, it's telling me I'm up at 13 seconds, which is kind of interesting. So I'm gonna take this 13 second shot, which should give this ripply water a nice smooth, flat surface which I might even get some nice reflexion in these little pools down here, so that would be nice. And if this shot turns out to be not total crap from this abysmal light, here's the shot. Well, the light may have been dull, but at least it wasn't sideways rain. And in the end, I decided to crop this image into a square because I just felt that the balance between the foreground and the background was more pleasing this way. I also felt that this location had lots of potential. And you may recall me saying that if the sunset was a bust, we'd maybe stay the night and come back for sunrise. Well, it's 6.30 a.m. I've had uh, four and a half hours of sleep and I do have a face like a well-chewed nipple. But I'm relatively happy because I'm back here at Bennett Bay on Campbell Point, hopefully getting an epic sunrise. I say hopefully, but I'm, I'm full of sh**. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna get anything. I think it's gonna be a bust again. What are your thoughts on the subject? I think it's gonna be spectacular. You reckon? Yeah. What makes you think that? Well, it's gotta be. You did say that you, you enjoy seeing failures, so, you know, top-notch content then, I guess, eh? <laughs> so, but, you know, it's not a total disaster, because, I mean, what did we spend, love? A, a full 24 hours getting here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah spent the night, got up at four. I mean, it's not a total disaster if I don't get a shot, you know. Just another complete failure. 
apparently that's good content so <laughs> well you know like and subscribe you know <laughs> No, 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 oh, yeah, I'll definitely, I mean, it's, it's getting better as we speak, love. It's, I can see the lights getting better as we speak. All right, manifest, I've got, I've got a manifest positivita. Right, okay, that's, oh yeah, it's going to be great. Anyway, if I can't get a shot today because of this sort of average light and the complete absence of foreground, because the tide has just, it's washed me out. If I can't get a nice sunrise shot, the plan after that, is to go and get breakfast and head to this Japanese garden that they've got here on Main Island, uh, which apparently is open 24 seven. So we'll, we'll give that a shot. I don't think there'll be much in the way of, you know, like color. But yeah, it's March. So, uh, but with it being March, there might be some cherry blossoms. I do like a good blurry chossum. So that might be nice. We'll see. I'm not ready to, uh, not ready to end it all just yet. You know, I'd be optimistic, you know. Well, Amanda's mantra of stay happy must have worked because just a few minutes later I think I'll do love. I think I'll read a page from Chasing Awe with Gavin Hardcastle, my very first hardback photography book. Let's read a page here. Oh, it's getting better, actually. I might have to start shooting, but I've probably got an extra few seconds. Uh, the Soakening from the Crystal Mill in Colorado. What a day this was. A soggy, moist day. After driving from Nanaimo, BC, I finally made it to the Road of Doom near the Crystal Mill in Colorado. Link in the description. So while I'm taking this absolutely epic shot, I'll just read you a page from my book, Seismic, uh, Oregon. It takes a pretty special event to lure me out of my hermithood to brave the crowds. This day was one such event. Just take another, another shot over here. Ooh, pink clouds. This is from Chocolate Swirl, the Devil's Pulpit in Scotland. Upon entering the canyon, my first sight was a young naked lady standing atop a mossy rock while a photographer took photos, giving her posing instructions in German. Link in the description below. And so in spite of my expectations, I'd actually had fun. Well, the sun is up and it is a glorious day. I didn't quite get the epic light that I wanted, but just look at this. Look at this beautiful side light. Wow. So I am trying a few of those uh, morning sun star shots, but you know, they don't, they don't get my juices flowing that much. I like that pre-dawn light, but it's still quite juicy. So I'm gonna shoot a few more frames and then I think we'll call it quits, eh? It's gonna be a bright sunny day. I'm still learning to go easy on myself and just enjoy what the day has to offer. And on a day like this, well, that's pretty easy to do. So one thing you can do with your camera bag to ensure structural integrity is to put in a copy of Chasing Awe with Gavin Harcastle, the hardback, my very first book. There's a link in the description below. It doesn't actually fit. <laughs> Chasing Awe with Gavin Hardcastle, just right there on the top, you know, just to keep things all, all in. There you go. That's what I like to do anyway, you know. Link in the description below. Can't actually close it, it's so big. Let's just have a, a quick look at that, see so, so what's going on in here. Oh my god, that's... Oh, that, oh that's nice, eh? Look at that. Eh? Oh, bloody hell, that's... Oh, god. 
<laughs> yes, that's about as good as it gets. I mean, it's a little bit too big to fit in the bag, but uh, I mean, if you've got a big enough bag, it's definitely going to be sturdy with it in your bag. And a lot heavier. <laughs> <laughs> well that is it, the sun is fully up now, the light's way too harsh for photography, so we're going to call it quits, head back to the camper, have a coffee and a breakfast, and then do you want to go look at that Japanese garden? Yeah? Maybe we'll see a whale. I hope so, I've never seen one. Oh, I'm starving. What do you want? I don't know, I'm just... Was that a jam stall? Was that one of those little jam stalls by the side of the road? You mean jelly? I mean jam, right, we're turning around. Hang on. I'm gonna go back. Yeah? Yeah, I want some jam. One of the things I love about leaving Nanaimo is the distinct absence of out-of-control crime, allowing for nice things like this. This is a, a little jam stall that's just by the side of the road, which relies on honesty. So you pick what you want, and then you, you leave you you leave your money in here, pay for it. And I can't I can't drive past. I, I like jam, you know. I can't drive past a jam stall. So I've got raspberry jam, peach jam, blueberry jam. But they also do things like. Um, a rosemary thyme infused white balsamic vinegar. I've only got nine dollars, so I'll just get Jan. Thai red pepper lime infused white balsamic vinegar. We imagine that with a bit of bit of bread and some cheese mm. and some bottle of wine. I want to try the red pepper jelly. Ooh, I think that's what we're gonna get. What what we're we gonna get? I think we're gonna get the garlic scape jelly. Garlic scape jelly. Because it's something new. Okay. Or, but this sounds good. Guinness and whiskey honey mustard. But I don't like either. So you might like that. Yeah, I will. So you got some garlic scape jelly. What are you going to do with that, love? I'm going to stick my baby bell right in there and just scoop it. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, just stick a baby bell in. Well, it said it was good with cheese. Yeah. That's all the cheese we got. All right. How much is it? Five twenty-five. All right, well, they're getting $7. They're getting a little tip. That's how you get your jam on Main Island. Sorry, jelly. I don't want to leave. I think I actually just want to live in here. Yeah, I, I kind of want to live in there too. 